What's going on lads, it's Billy the Kid here and I hope you're having a great day and thank you for joining me for today's video, which is my review of the Naval Strike DLC that recently came out for Battlefield 4. Now I know it's been quite some time since my last upload, but recently I came down with a bad dose of the flu and I did not have the energy and I did not want to be doing any videos because of my sick grovelly voice. So I decided to stay in bed and try and get better and better I am. I am uh, now all okay, I'm back making videos. So once again I do apologize and I'm sure you can understand and I thank you for your patience in hanging around the channel and waiting for my next upload. The gameplay is going to be Carrier Assault on Wavebreaker so I hope you enjoy the gameplay. Now the first thing about this review about Naval Strike I'm going to cover is the elephant in the room and that is Carrier Assault, the new game mode for Battlefield 4 that was introduced with this new DLC, Naval Strike. Carrier Assault was basically the main selling point for Naval Strike for DICE. You know, they kept on saying, buy Naval Strike for Carrier Assault, because it's basically Titan Mode from 2142. Now, personally, I've never played Titan Mode from 2142, but I've had my friends tell me what it is. I've seen footage on YouTube of what it was. And when I heard about Carrier Assault, I was actually very excited. However, Straight off the bat, I had to remember, I had to remind myself, hang on a second, Carrier Assault, it sounds good, I love playing the objective in Battlefield 4, however, there's a massive problem with playing the objective in Battlefield 4, random people. People just don't seem to get it, people just don't seem to care anymore because the game is so broken, and it's still broken today. So, on one hand, I was very excited for Carrier Assault, but on the other hand, I also had to remind myself, well, the level of playing the objective in Battlefield 4 is at an all-time low, playing Conquest, Conquest Large, and Rush especially. People just don't seem to care about the objective, so I was very worried that that would translate over to Carrier Assault. And I have to say, it's kind of hit and miss. On certain servers, you will get a good team that can play Carrier Assault, that can go for the objectives, that can hit those anti-ship missile emplacements, capture them, and once the enemy's carrier has been damaged enough, they will push for the carrier, they will attack it, and then on some servers you won't get that at all. People are just sniping, people are just playing TDM on Carrier Assault basically. It really is hit and miss for me personally with Carrier Assault. It really does depend on the server you join and the quality of your random teammates. However, basically I t I'd say about 60% of the time of playing Carrier Assault I've had a positive experience. I've had an enjoyable experience even with playing with randoms and playing with, with friends and squad mates that I know and we're communicating. However, there are a few game mechanics that I do not agree with and I don't like in Carrier Assault. One of them is the fact that once you have breached the enemy carrier, you can then power drop onto the enemy carrier. I, I can understand where DICE was going with this. They wanted to try and keep the level of the pace of the gameplay equally intense. You know, basically saying here, you can power drop on top of the carrier now, but I personally don't like this. I think you have to, what they should have done is just not introduce that at all and basically said, listen, if you want to win this game, you have to get on the enemy carrier. You have to get a rib bolt, you have to get a quad, or I almost said quad bike. You have to get a, um, a jet ski, you have to get a transport heli, you can get all these vehicles that are in the game, hand it, head on over to the enemy carrier and board it. That's what you're supposed to do. But instead they give this, this, this stupid, really, really stupid mechanic of just power dropping on top of the enemy carrier. It makes it very, very hard for the defender to defend if they're just given this option. And not only that, not only can they power drop on top of your carrier once it's been damaged enough by the anti-ship missiles, the fact that they can, once they've taken the first MCOM inside the carrier, the fact that they can then spawn inside your carrier is also ridiculous. And I really, really do hope that DICE can see that this is not a, a good way to go, this is not a viable mechanic to have in Carrier Assault and they can remove it because that makes it even harder for the defenders to defend their carrier. The fact that now they can just basically have a m massive mobile spawn point inside your carrier is completely stupid. I really don't agree with it at all and I hope that they do remove it. Other than that though, I do enjoy Carrier Assault. I have, like I said, had positive experiences with it as well as negative ones, but these really rely on the quality of the teammates and the servers you're playing on. Sometimes, like I said before, you will get good teammates, you will get bad teammates. So now that Carrier Assault is out of the way, next thing I want to talk about is the maps of Naval Strike. We've got four new maps. We've got Wavebreaker, Operation Mortar, 
Nansha strikes and Lost Islands and very easily I can say that Naval Strike has to be my favorite DLC so far in terms of the maps. I'm sure there's some people out there that just compare this DLC to just Paracel Storms times 4 but that's not really the case. That's what I thought anyway when I heard about Naval Strike and I looked up the, the images of the new maps and I, I basically said oh for Christ's sake it's Paracel Storm because Paracel Storm for me has to be one of my hated maps. I really don't like Paracel Storm basically because of the pace of the gameplay. I want my gameplay to always be fast. I want always action. I don't want to be running around for 10 minutes trying to capture an objective, you know? So basically, that's what I thought about these maps for Naval Strike, but I was very pleasantly surprised about the pace of the gameplay for two of the maps, Wavebreaker and Operation Mortar. In all of the matches I've played in Wavebreaker and Operation Mortar, whether it's Carrier Assault or Conquest, I feel that the pace of the gameplay is very rapid. It's very consistent. There's not a lot of areas where you were you know basically traveling on foot or in a vehicle and there's no action basically because the map is so big that was my one one of my biggest fears with naval strikes maps i was i was fearing that maybe they were going to go too far in terms of the size but thankfully this is not the case most of the matches i've played on these two maps have been very enjoyable even with random teammates who didn't know where they were going who've never played the maps before however i do feel that nansha strike and lost islands kind of miss it on terms of the pace of the gameplay. In my view, it's kind of slow. I, I could be wrong. You can disagree with me and say, no, I don't agree with you, Billy. I think these four maps are fantastic in terms of gameplay. But for me personally, Nansha Strike and Lost Islands take second place in terms of the pace of the gameplay. Wavebreaker and Operation Mortar have to be two of my most favorite maps now in Battlefield 4. But the last thing I want to talk to you about Naval Strike is Easter eggs. The fact that Megalodon has recently been discovered on one of the new maps is very worrying personally for me because this particular easter egg has been hinted at since basically the launch of Battlefield 4 and very recently I have found multiple servers of people not killing each other and just trying to activate this particular easter egg. Now does it look cool? Yeah it does but that's it. It, it just looks cool. And, you know, that's it. Why, why are we all trying to find a fucking massive shark? What was really, really worrying for me and confirmed in multiple sessions on Conquest and Conquest Large is people not even playing the objective. People just swimming out to this buoy in the middle of the water so they can activate this easter egg instead of playing the damn game. That is what has me worried and angry about this whole easter egg hunt. If DICE wants to make an easter egg hunting game, please let them go make an easter egg hunting game. They can go call it whatever the hell they want. Fucking easter egg simulator, I don't know. But that's all I want to say about the easter eggs. I personally don't want any more easter eggs because A it ruins the gameplay and B this is a first person shooter, it's not an easter egg hunter simulator. If DICE wants to go make that, all the better for him. All this talk about, oh let's find Megalodon or let's figure out what this easter egg is, I just don't agree with it. If DICE put as much effort into fixing the game than they put into, you know, thinking up these easter eggs, I think the game would be fixed by now. So that's all I want to say about easter eggs lads. I really don't get why they're putting in so many easter eggs. I think it's really just there because they just want to maybe distract people from the massive issues that still have plagued this game since launch. But other than that, I just don't want to see any more easter eggs. I don't want to see people hunting for easter eggs instead of playing the objective. But if it's your server, then fair enough. You've got the choice. You have that, you have that right to go and find out and figure out these easter eggs. But lads, that's all I want to say. I really do hope you enjoyed today's video. All in all, Naval Strike is an enjoyable DLC. By far, it is the best DLC for Battlefield 4. However, there are some glaring mechanical gameplay issues that need to be fixed with car Carrier Assault. And it is really enjoyable, but it has to be dependent on you know the random servers and the random teammates that can be good or can be bad. I hope you enjoyed today's video, lads. Be sure to comment in the comment section down below of your thoughts about Naval Strike DLC, how have you enjoyed it, have you not enjoyed it, and why? Let me know lads, thanks again for watching, this is Billy the Kid, and I'll see you again lads, and thanks again for watching.